Welcome to the video. Okay, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 half minus 1 over x plus 2 over x. Okay, this looks like a mess. We got fractions over a fraction and or fractions in a fraction and so let's just let, let's do what we always do and just see if we can take 0 and plug it in and and see what comes out. And it shouldn't take long to realize that this will if you plug 0 in, this will end up being 0 over 0. Because if we plug 0 into this, we're just going to get 1 half minus 1 half, that's 0, and then, and then into the denominator you just have x, so that's 0. Okay, so that didn't work. And the 0 over 0, what does that tell us? It tells us to do more work, right? If for some reason, just, just uh, I haven't said this yet, but for, if for some reason you got a non-0 over 0, let's say we plugged it in and we got like 2 over 0, or something like that, that's not the same as getting 0 over 0. 2 over 0 tells you a lot more. Anyways, let's continue. Okay, so pause the video. You, you have the limit in front of you. Pause the video. Think about it. How can you do this? What's a method that you can use to solve this? Or simplify it even. Okay, hopefully you're back from, from thinking about it for a minute and trying it on your own. Let's, let's begin. So, what can we do to simplify this? Well, the first thing we can do is we can just combine the uh, find a common denominator for the fraction and fractions in the top, and then do the subtraction that's indicated. So, hopefully, I, I, I'm assuming by this point you're in a calculus class. Your algebra skills are are pretty decent, but I know that I'm probably assuming too much <laughs> for many of you, and I don't want you to take offense to that. It's just that many many students they they lack strong algebra skills. Let me make some more space for myself. Okay, and all of this over x. Oop, what was that? There we go. Okay, so to, to, to uh, the common denominator, we're just going to multiply by the other denominator over itself. And that's going to work for us. 2 over 2. Okay, so you can see the denominators, this, this denominator is going to be x plus 2 times 2, and over here it's going to be x plus 2 times 2. So those are those denominators, after we do this multiplication, are definitely going to be co a, a, a common denominator. And then, so let, what are we left with on top? That's the question. So let's, let's simplify this. So uh, instead of writing equal signs and stuff, I just am doing things in steps just to keep it organized. So this is going to be x plus 2 over, well, since we're going to have a common denominator, it's going to be all over one thing. So it's going to be x plus 2, and then this is going to be all over something, and then that's going to be all over x. Okay, x plus 2 minus, and then the other numerator, the top level numerator, is just 2. And then in the, uh, the this common denominator that we found was just 2 times x plus 2. Simple enough. Okay, and then that's all over x. So to keep things straight, we can kind of group these together because that's really what's going on. Those fractions are grouped, and then that's all over x. Okay, and then 3. This was something I was confused about, actually. I remember thinking it specifically when I was... I think I, this might have even been the topic. Um, when I was taking an Algebra 1 class, I couldn't remember how fractions worked exactly with the grouping. If you have the top grouped, what is, happens to the bottom? If you have the bottom grouped, what happens then? And you just got to remember that when you're dividing, you, do, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to take this whole large group. Oh, let, well, let's simplify the inside. Th this is positive 2 minus 2, so that's just going to add to 0, right? So this is going to become x over 2 times x plus 2. So that whole thing times by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's going to be 1 over x. And now, since these are being multiplied, we can divide those x's out to 1. OK. And let's clean things up here. So we're going to be left with the limit as x approaches 0 
of 1 over 2 times x plus 2. And now we're ready to substitute. We are ready to substitute and we're going to plug 0 in for x and this will just become and now we can we can drop the limit sign and this will just become 1 over 1 over 2 times 2 2 plus 0 is just 2 which is of course equal to 1 fourth okay and that's that's all there is to it the limit so this limit is equal to 1 fourth all right See you in the next video. I think we'll start talking about the uh, limits of trig functions. See you then.